So I have been using NixOS now for 54 days, so I'm approaching the two month mark. Now I'm not going to flood the channel with NixOS content, but there's quite a few things that I want to talk about over the course of my two year period on this operating system. And today what I want to do is talk about, at least so far, five of the things that I really, really like about NixOS. Because in the past I have been highly critical of this you know, distro, and there have been times where I've made fun of the people who use it because of their fascination with having a configuration file. So there, there have been negative moments in my relationship with the NixOS community, but the operating system itself I find fascinating. It's one of the reasons why I've chosen it for my two-year uh, review. And today I want to talk about at least the first five things that I've come up with that I truly like about this operating system. Before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd be really appreciative. It'd really help the channel. So the first one is that it's just different. And I like that about it. So this here is the one of the parts of my configuration file. Now this is, happens to be the module where I control uh, or where I install applications for my user. And I enjoy this way of managing applications, not because of the whole reproducibility aspect of the configuration file. That stuff is cool. I'll, I'm going to make a whole video about reproducibility sometime in the future. But right now, what I, I really enjoy about this is just the ability to see what applications I have installed. Now, this isn't a thing that's, you know, you can do this on any distro. But I like that it's just the applications that I've installed. I've typed every word here. So I know that that's what's being installed. There's no list of dependencies here. I, well, let me be more honest. There's no list of dependencies that I haven't explicitly installed. So like libgcc, I installed that. It wasn't a dependency that was automatically installed by a program. So there are some of those things here. But mostly these are things that are like actual applications that I use. And I can just go in here, I can see exactly what I have installed. Now, if I were on, say, OpenSUSE, I could do something like sudo zipper-i, and it would show me all the applications I have installed, but it would also show me a, a grand list of dependencies and things that I didn't install that are just kind of there. So I enjoy having a list of the things that I have installed right here for me. And I can prune those things. One of the, th the biggest issues I've always had with Linux, is, especially since I've started this channel, is that I install a lot of stuff. About 90% of it you guys never see. And it just unfortunately stays on my system forever because I forget that it's there. I have no reason to go searching through my Rofi to show the, the applications that I have installed. I mean, sometimes I would, but even then, sometimes those things, Rofi doesn't show everything. If it doesn't have a desktop file, say it's a terminal application, it's not gonna show up here, at least in this view. So the, my ability to go in and just kind of prune things that I've installed but don't actually need from this list is fantastic. More than that, I really do enjoy just being able to manage things in a different way than the traditional package manager. It's just a, it, it's a, it's a neat way of doing things. Now, I, is it more efficient? Is it better? I, I don't have that answer for you guys yet, or, and maybe I never will. But for me personally right now, I enjoy that NixOS is so different than everything else that I've used before. The next thing that I want to talk about also has to do with applications is that it has a huge repo of applications. There are, if you look at some sources, they'll tell you that it's something like five times more than the AUR. I don't know if those numbers are true. I do know that it's bigger than the AUR. I do know that it's really, really large in terms of the quantity of applications that it has. Now, I don't know if there are downsides to that yet. I really haven't discovered any so far, but I will tell you that the fact that they have this wide ranging availability of software makes things just easier. So if I wanted to install DaVinci Resolve and Resolve wasn't crap on Linux, I could do that because it's in the repositories. There are a ton of things just like that that are just kind of there that you would have to build if you're on a different distro. So. I enjoy the fact that I have this huge selection of repositories. It's kind of like having the AUR again. I haven't used Arch in a few years now, and I remember my love of having a whole bunch of applications. This has reminded me of that because I have now can, if I want to install something like, say for example, I wanted to install something called Superfile. Superfile is right here. 
Superfile is a fairly rare application. It's a file manager. I don't know if it's in every repository or not, but, but it was in the NixOS repository, and it's just named Superfile, so I was able to install it. If I find rare applications that I want to try, chances are they're going to be in the repository, and that's really cool. Uh, the next one on the list is verbose service management. So one of the weird, really weird things about System D is that there's a lot of stuff running and it controls a lot of stuff, right? It's one of the things that a lot of people compl complain about. But for me, the biggest thing that I always wondered was like, what's all running? Like, what kind of services do I have just kind of going on my system? Especially as I started installing more and more applications, I oftentimes those things come with services to run in the background and they do that stuff automatically. Now, NixOS does that too, just to be clear. Systemd still works basically the way Systemd works everywhere. But one of the cool things that you can do in NixOS is that you can actually define the service some of the first services that are running in the background in in your configuration file and that allows you to kind of get a, a better idea of some of the things that you have running especially the things that you've initiated and installed i i like that i also like the ability to control your desktop manager and your display manager right here from the configuration file as a service instead of having to go hunt for it within system d or anything like that so that's really cool so verbose system management is one of the things that i'm really kind of liking i i haven't fully moved everything here and i don't even know if you can probably you can't uh, or it'd be not worthwhile but the things that i've initiated that i've wanted to run that i need able being able to put those things in here is has been fantastic so there's that uh, the next one that i want to talk about is just kind of a consequence of using flakes one of the things that all the tutorials about flakes tell you to do is to make your NixOS, the NixOS configuration directory, a Git repository. And one of the, I really, one of the things that I've always been kind of bad at is backing stuff up and being able to have all of my system files in one directory that's also a Git repo that's always updated because you, you, you have to push your changes to the Git repo before you rebuild the system, at least you should. And the, the idea that I have a backup repository of this automatically because that's just kind of the way it works is great. So it being a Git first repository or a Git first operating system rather is really nice. I like having that available to me. Now I know there are other distros that kind of do that and do that automatically, but for me, I, I like this. The last one on the list is something that I would have complained about 50 days ago because I didn't like this. I, I am used to going into uh, Etsy FS tab to manage my drives. I'm used to using systemd and autofs to use NFS and autofs, so things that are very terminal based, that have a very structured way of doing things. And all of that is different on NixOS. Well, you can do it that way, but you're supposed to do it declarative, declaratively. But I have come to actually like the fact that I have all of my drives that I need auto connected here. I have also my NFS stuff here. I can also manage my firewall stuff here, and then I manage the FS, NFS mounts here. This stuff also controls the auto FS stuff. So if I wanted to, it, so because I want this stuff to auto connect, everything here controls that. And while, I, like I said, I didn't like it to begin with, I like it now because it's just kind of all in one place. I also don't have to remember that I've changed something in FS tab. It's just here. And when I eventually have to do a reinstall, all the stuff will automatically be brought along with me because I have the configuration file. I won't have to remember how to set up the, the FS tab, which I always, always kind of have to remind myself to do. Same thing with NFS. I have a documentation system going on that I've talked about before. One of the, the documents in there is how to set up NFS and AutoFS. Doing it this way, just having the configuration file and just bring it along to my next reinstall means that I don't have to remember that stuff. It's just going to do it for me. That's really cool, and I enjoy that part of it. Now, I don't know if that this is for everybody because it is definitely different than FS tab. If you've learned how to use FS tab, coming in here and doing it this way is a little bit different, but it was not onerous. It's just basically saying you want to do something to the file system. You want to mount something here. It's telling it what device you want to mount. In this case, we're mounting an NFS share. The file system type in this case is NFS. The options are these. If you're using a regular 
connected hard drive, you're telling it where you want it to mount. You give it the device file location. So in this case is the by UUID file name or file path, the file system type. And then you give it the basic FS tab option. So in my case, we're doing defaults and no fail. That way, if it's disconnected for some reason, the operating system still boots. I like doing it this way that it, it's so good that it's kind of laid out that way. And it's not, like I said, it's not hard. So it was after I got over myself a little bit, it, I actually learned to enjoy doing the whole file system that way. So those are the five things that I found that I truly like about NixOS. And I think that the biggest one is just that it's so different. I've had to, I kind of got comfortable with uh, OpenSUSE. You know, it's just a regular Linux distribution, of course, and it does things in the way a normal Linux distribution does. And I learned all those things. When something went wrong, I could fix it, and that was fine, and it didn't cause any drama. Now, I haven't had any major things go wrong with NixOS, but I will say that if something were to go wrong, I'd have to learn how to fix it. And I think that's cool. Maybe I'm just weird that I like to learn how to do different things, but I, I do enjoy that it's different. So that's probably the biggest one on the list. So uh, that is it for this video right now. I really do appreciate you guys watching. If you want to help this channel at all, you can leave those thumbs up. I'd really, really appreciate it if you like the video. It would really help the channel. YouTube's kind of punishing some of us Linux YouTubers at the moment, so the more likes I get, the better off I'll be. I would really appreciate it. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. If you want to leave a comment, comments in the comment section below. I'm doing this stuff all out of order, which is weird, so that makes me feel a little comfortable. Uh, anyways, you can follow me on uh, Mastodon, link in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There I provide a weekly exclusive podcast for my followers. Uh, at least usually it's weekly. Lately I've been doing about every 10 days or so because I'm not good at time anymore. Uh, but We'll get back on track with that. But anyways, that podcast is basically me just sitting in front of this microphone for 15 minutes or so, just rambling about nonsense. So if you're interested in that, go over to Patreon, support me there. All the tiers get that as well. So you can follow me on, actually, the next thing is the store. So you can go to the sh store if you want some merch. That's shop.thelinkscast.org. Uh, I have all sorts of merch, including this hat, other hats, t-shirts, all sorts of stuff. All, this, all the support I get there goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for that. Thanks, everybody who, who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.